outside of the Catholic Church and you go to other cultures, you know, you also find the depictions of the Orion Nebula, for example, the, uh, you know, the Mayans. Their ver they thought the Orion Nebula was a place of creation because they had the three hearthstones, which were labeled as um, Rigel, Saif, and Alnitek. And in the middle of that triangle, they considered creation, which is right where the Orion Nebula is. So there's a lot of people out there that associate the Orion Nebula with things that are bad um, because it's associated with the Vatican. But they don't realize that you have to understand that the Vatican was hiding this stuff when the Mayans and the Hopi and people like that, they weren't hiding anything about it. Um, and in addition, the Catholic Church actually had at one point had stolen, I believe, the Popal Vu, which is a sacred Bible from the Mayans and had hidden it in a Catholic Church altar. So there's this, this, whatever, there's this motive in order to keep something quiet about the Orion Nebula by the church. It seems to be, doesn't it? Yes. Yeah, it's, yeah, it seems to be their uh, modus operandi. So, um, it's quite interesting. And you say that, uh, this is also in St. Peter's, right? So let's hold that thought and we'll go to the St. Peter's one after the break. Okay. And, um, you're listening to American Freedom Radio. And, uh, I'm here with, uh, Danny Wilson discussing the Orion Nebula. Okay, welcome back for the uh, second segment of the uh, Santos Party Show. Today I have um, uh, a very interesting guest and um, we're uh, discussing with uh, Danny Wilton the discoveries of um, the Orion Nebula in many of the churches and cathedrals uh, around Europe. And um, it, this is quite interesting how... Um, uh, 400 years ago, the, they were depicting the Orion Nebula as accurately as we see it today from the um, Hubble telescope. So, uh, Danny, uh, it's interesting, You before the break, we were talking about the Mayans, that uh, the Mayans believed that in between the stars of Rigel, Saif and Alnitak uh, in the um, Orion constellation is where creation comes from. Creation is being uh, being made, being caused in this section of the uh, of the zodiac. Right, and not only the Mayans, but the uh, the Hopi. If you take a look at, uh, in fact, Dan Winter discovered. Um, I don't know the gentleman's name, but someone who had noted that a lot of the ruins from the Hopi, if you take a look at their cities and where they lived, were also matching the Orion constellation. So you have this pattern that is basically coming from all over the world. And I believe that it all stems back to Egypt because, you know, when you take a look at Osiris' tomb, you see the flower of life. There is something special there. And then you have Alexander the Great. <clears throat> you know, he came in and uh, defeated, uh, you know, the Egypt. And then all of a sudden you have this, uh, you have this huge obelisk <laughs> in the middle of, um, Piazza Square. So I, I think a lot of this is stemming back to something that was known during Egypt. What's your take on that, Santos? Yeah. Well, look, I'm, I'm looking at one of the photos right now, uh, that you've posted, one of the pictures you've posted on uh, your Facebook site where you have um, Jesus with outstretched arms on the cross right in the middle of this nebula. Right. Mm -hmm. And then, as you said, you have this this king above him and then the holy dove above that, right? Uh -huh. Now, all of these have their correspondences in the Orion Nebula. I mean, this is absolutely uh, uh, verifiable, isn't it? I mean, you can see it. Right. I think you can see it. And... and even in artists that come later on, uh, for example, Salvador Dali, if you take a look at his painting called The Ascension of Christ, what you see is you see that same figure above Christ with the dove right underneath her chin, and then Christ with his arms stretched out, just like you see uh, inside the Orion Nebula. You can see that Christ archetype. Now, I only zoomed in on his head, but if you look in the middle of the nebula, you actually see it looks like a whole man floating in the middle of the nebula. 
And, uh, and so you see it in Salvador Dali's paintings. You see it in, in, uh, a lot of the really old art. Uh, all the, in fact, it goes back probably to 800, 700 AD. You can find some paintings that, uh, that are depicting the same thing. And even though they're not as, um, as highly detailed as what you see in the Cathedral of St. Peter or some of these altars, you can still see that they're pointing to the same thing because you have the same basic symbols and they're in the same places. And so this picture that you see with Christ there that you're pointing out is it's got that shape like it's a womb, doesn't it? It does. It does. Now, um, you asked me what my take is on that particular aspect of um of all of this, well, you know, we did discuss that Orion was the lamb and Jesus is the lamb. Uh, there's another aspect of Jesus, and that is that he is the Logos. Now, I've shown in my presentations that um, Taurus corresponds to the part of the head, uh, which is where the mouth is, the mouth and the neck. You see, in um, astrology, Aries is the top of the head, and uh, Taurus is at the bottom of the head. And then, of course, the twins would be uh, Gemini. Now, um, so what we have there is um, if Taurus rules the bottom of the mouth, well, that's where the mouth does the speaking, you see. And speaking is the logos, the word. And so this is what they would be doing too. <laughs> I mean, they're, they're, this is on uh, on an astro theological level that I'm talking here. They are they are symbolising the fact that uh, Jesus, in the role of the Word, is in Orion. That is part of the macrocosmic Adam Catmon man, which does the speaking, which does the logos, Very because Aries above Taurus, yeah, or next to adjacent to Taurus in the top part of the head, uh, well, that's where the brain is. That's where the thinking is done, you see. So thinking is processed in the brain, which corresponds with Aries. Speaking is uh, uh, processed in uh, Taurus, which is the mouth. And uh, doing has to do with uh, Gemini, the two hands, because that's where you do things, you see. You go doing everything you do, you do with your hands. Right. And they are the twins. So you see, we have this very, very um, particular uh, group of stars, Aries, Taurus, and Gemini, and the ancients have always, always praised that quadrant of stars which corresponds to the spring. You see, the golden age, right. the morning time from 6 a.m. to 12 midday. And you see, they are the most precious of all the stars in the skies because right in the middle there, is the Pleiades. I mean, the Pleiades is the, is the jewel of the heavens. And I'm showing in my videos that the Pleiades correspond to the pineal gland, you see. And um, in the Pleiades, there is a star called Alcyone. And uh, Alcyone, by the occultists and, um, and the esoterists, they say that um, Alcyone is the throne of God, you see. And um, it's where God sits on his throne and rules all of the star systems and rules all of the heavens. And uh, so, therefore, if that corresponds to the pineal gland, the pineal gland is pretty much the uh, the boss, if you like, the governor of the lymphatic system and your um, seven uh, ductless glands. Well, I have a, I have a question for you related. To... I have a question for you related yeah. to that. When you take a look at the uh, Carl's Kurtz Church, and you also take, which is the St. Charles Church, and you take a look at the Cathedral of St. Peter, what you see at the bottom of the Orion Nebula in both cases, especially in the Cathedral of St. Peter, is you see St. Peter's throne. And then there is an, and St. Peter is known for one of his uh, famous statues um, of he's holding the keys to heaven. Have you seen that? Yes. Yes. Is there a relationship there, you think? Um, well, that one I need to think about because um, Peter is uh, Jew Peter, you see. Um, in the Gospels, the character of Jesus, uh, Jesus, yes, is the son. And um, his uh, 
favourite apostle, of course, which is Peter, that would be Jupiter. And in the solar system, that's how it works. The favourite of the sun is uh, Jupiter because they're, um, they are positive planets. They are benefactors, you see. Jupiter is known as the, um, the greater benefic. Saturn is known as the greater malefic, <laughs> you see. Right. So the sun and Saturn have this kind of opposition always. They're always opposed to each other in some way. And also their natures. Uh, the sun is hot, whereas uh, Saturn is cold. But Jupiter, on the other hand, he's warm. He's, uh, he's hot, hot and moist, and he's a benefic. You see, so um, he being in there, the Apostle Peter, that would also have to do with um, the fact that he is um, a shining friend of the sun, you see, the Logos, Jesus. And um, this is what they're trying to tell you, uh, Danny. You see, it's all, all about science. There is nothing in those artworks that is not science. It's just up to us to discover the key and uh, what they're uh, exactly trying to say and on how many levels because there's always um, four to seven levels in all of this. They never present a symbol which has only one meaning. You see, spiritual symbols have a depth of meaning. Oh, I agree. I mean, I've, so, t I've um, taken the uh, I've taken the star tetrahedron inside of the uh, inside of the center of that Orion Nebula and taken it down to almost a quantum level to what I see in other pictures, and uh, it's very interesting that the the eye that seems to be right in the middle of the star tetrahedron is actually a large vortex, and I don't know exactly what that means, but when I take a look at symbolism such as the the Eye of Ra, for example, and I take a look at the Zen symbol and the, the ancient swastika symbol. They all seem to me like they are pointing to a vortex or a black hole of some sort. For, the, for listeners who are interested in, in uh, checking out your work, Danny, we've neglected to uh, give them a uh, YouTube site or or some links, or perhaps, um, do you have a website, or um, can you give people your uh, Facebook uh, details, perhaps, or anything so that they can check out your work? Sure. Um, actually, my YouTube site's the most popular. That's where I post most of my stuff. And the handle that I go by is Starscream, but it's mixed It's mixed with, a, uh, with letters and numbers, so it's actually 5T4R Scream. 233. And that's, once again, that's 5T, as in Tom, 4R, Scream, 233. And is that Scream as in S-C-R-E-A-M? Yes. Okay. So it looks like Star Scream, <laughs> 233. That's right. And that's where I post most and, of my uh, stuff. And the number two. Th Number 233 is, uh, right. it used to be 144, but, uh, I think YouTube had, was about to try to get rid of that account. So I, uh, moved it up to the next number in the Fibonacci sequence. So it's now 233. <laughs> yeah, that's a very significant number, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> uh, goodness. And, yeah. And website? Do you have a website? I don't have a website at this time. I was going to create one here pretty soon, but uh, right now I'm pretty much using Facebook and YouTube. Okay, so is your YouTube uh, site easy to uh, navigate? Which which videos would you recommend uh, one watches first? Well, I have uh, I have two great playlists out there. If you're interested in the Mayan calendar stuff, then um, I have something called. Uh, uh, cliff the the Mayan ninth wave cliff notes. That's one of the playlists. The playlist that goes into some of the stuff that we're seeing now, um, including the uh, Orion Nebula stuff. The latest playlist that I have out there is called "Recreating the Past," and it's actually featured on my channel right now. 